What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's a little bit weird. I think this is the first time that I've ever in the like 10 minutes that I've had this YouTube channel that I've posted videos in back-to-back -back weeks, uh, not including shorts, which I remember I said last time, I don't really count shorts, um, but like actual full-length videos. Uh, I don't think I've ever posted two in a row, like back-to-back -back weeks, uh, mostly because I've just been busy enough that I don't have the time to do it. So uh, this is a first for me, uh, maybe a, a step toward some more consistency this year. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but thanks for checking out this video. Hello to all of the new subscribers. Who knew that all it took was $75 worth of baits to get the, your subscriber count like almost triple in four days. <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest with you, I thought that it would take like a couple of weeks or something uh, to hit that 100 mark and I posted that video on Thursday and I was checking my phone at drill on Saturday and I had already crossed to like 105 or something so I like doubled my subscriber count uh, in this, it's like three days, two or three days. Um, so bribery does work if you're wondering. <laughs> um, so the reason you're seeing this video so soon uh, is because I do have a winner of that box. So I hit that 100 subscriber count on, like I said, on Saturday, I think it was. Um, it's That's when I checked it. So I think it was on Saturday. Um, I hit that 100 subscriber mark. So I started scrolling through uh, comments and just picked one uh, from a new subscriber. And the winner, pop you up on the screen right here. Uh, Fly Guy Crew Wear, with that comment, is going to win this box of soft plastic. $75 worth of soft plastics from a variety of brands, variety of types and styles and techniques and colors and all that good stuff. Um, just thrown into a box uh, and it's going to be sent to you. So I'll be reaching out to you, trying to find you somehow, um, connect with you through here or somewhere else on social media. Uh, and I'll get that sent to you in the next week or so uh, after this video posts, which should be later this week. It's a Monday or sorry, uh, Sunday night when I'm recording this. I should get it posted this week sometime, uh, like maybe toward the back of the week. So I'll get that sent to you. Thanks for all of the new subscribers. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking, commenting, uh, all of that great stuff uh, on that last video, my rod and reel video i uh, got a lot of positive feedback on it so i'm really excited about doing just some more stuff like that some more gear type of stuff which is what we're doing today so today i want to talk you through my top five favorite baits to throw year round um now i live in missouri so weather can be unpredictable to say the least um to say the most i would say that you don't know minute to minute what the weather is going to do. It could literally be snowing and then stop and be sunny and 60 degrees within 10 minutes. Um, it, it's just, it's tumultuous living in Missouri. And I realize that I'm wearing an Arkansas Razorback shirt. I'm from Arkansas, but I live in Missouri. So I don't want to hear too much hate about that uh, down in the comments. Um, but I, yeah, I live in Missouri in the Ozarks. So same area that I grew up in just on the Missouri side of Arkansas. So all that to say, the, the types of conditions I'm fishing in are topsy-turvy. They're all over the place, but the water conditions, at least in the uh, bodies of water that I'm fishing all over my area in the Ozarks, are all very similar. Lots of clear water, uh, lots of running water, so streams, rivers, creeks, that kind of thing. But even the lakes are very, very clear. Um, rocky bottoms, lots of timber, um, uh, not a whole lot of vegetation, like not a whole lot of grass, um, lots more rocks, wood, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm fishing things that are going to be working better in clear water. I'm fishing a lot of finesse stuff, um, even though the, these top five lures of mine are, are not all finesse. Um, actually, most of them are power fishing <laughs> lures, but um, these are lures that I feel confident throwing year round. Um, even in the dead of winter, I'll go out you know, you throw your typical winter baits, jerk baits, Ned rigs, um, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but I'm throwing primarily these five lures 
just as confidence lures because I've caught fish on them almost every time I go fishing, it seems like. Um, now that's not the case. Otherwise, I would have a uh, much bigger following and a lot more videos of fish catches and things for you. Um, but these are confidence lures that I feel like I'm going to catch fish on just about every single time. So let's get into it. Um, and these are in order five to one. So let's get to it with my number five lure, which is a Texas rigged crawdad, specifically a crawdad. Uh, I Uh, I, I like worms, creature baits, um, you know, all of the other, like the Helgramites, the soft plastics, it, it, I throw them all. But in the Ozarks, it just seems like crawdads get the job done. Now this is a black and blue 10,000 fish saw craw. Um, is it 10,000 fish? Anyway, um, it's a saw craw um, in black and blue. I also have this in a green pumpkin with, uh, I think, purple flake. Um, but this is one of my favorite crawdads in general. I love the Kraken Craw as well by uh, Guggen Squad, but I really love this saw craw because of the flanges on the craws. It gives it a nice, good flapping motion. It's got the extra appendages here. Um, I like the size because you just take off literally that first section and it's a perfect jig trailer, chatterbait trailer, um, or you fish a Texas rig like this. I love the Texas rig craw though. Um, because it just seems like it, it just gets bites. It just does well around here. Like I said, there's lots of rocks where I'm fishing. So that means crawdads. There's crawdads up under those rocks and all over the place on the bottom. And so I'm fishing with lots of crawdads um, because it's one of the primary uh, forage species for bass around here. So lots of crawdads. Um, I have the black and blue on this one. This is a four rod EWG hook. I forget the brand. Um, I just have like dozens of them thrown in my terminal box that are all the same size. Um, it's four rod EWG hook. Um, I'll usually use a either five sixteenths or three eighths ounce weight on this, depending on the depth I'm fishing. So if I'm like around the corner at the Finley River, I'll probably go with five sixteenths or even throw this weightless. Um, but if I'm at the lake, like down at Bull Shoals fishing with my family, I'll probably go to the three eighths because uh, it's a little bit deeper in a lot of the spots we're fishing anyway. So, um, but I usually do throw it weighted and I like to peg it, you know, maybe an inch or so above, um, not too high, but a little bit above. So number five, Texas rig, crawdad specifically, but Texas rig. Moving on, number four is chatterbait or any bladed jig. It um, doesn't have to be a chatterbait. This chatterbait. This one just happens to be the original chatterbait um, in, a, in a white. Now, bladed jigs are a video of their own. Really, all of these are a video of their own and I might do them at some point, but the bladed jig, very simply, um, I like white, white and chartreuse, black and blue, fire craw, which is any color red, um, it's a kind of a generic term for anything red or like orange, uh, and some sort of bluegill pattern. So like a green and purple uh, kind of pattern or green and some orange or, you know, a bluegill pattern. Um, because those just seem to work the best. I know there are other colors and I know that there are other colors that work great. I actually have two colors of the um, Berkeley slobber knocker that are very different, the herring, and then I think it's like bruised or something. Uh, it's like a black and blue and purple and green and all kinds of colors going on in there. I'm gonna try those this year and I, I think those are gonna be pretty killer. Um, but when it comes to bladed jigs, I try to keep it simple. I mostly just throw white with a fluke or a swim bait on the back of it. Um, this is a 3 8 ounce. I pretty much stick with 3 8 or half ounce. I do have some of the micro ones that I'll use in like the really small creeks in the area, but pretty much I'm throwing the 3 8 um, in all the bladed jigs that I have. I don't really need to explain the bladed jig. It's just, it's a fish catcher, you know, and it does it year round. Even in cold water, this is still gonna get that fish's attention 
uh, and make it, you know, make it want to eat. So like I said, I stick with white a lot of times. That's why I got that one for this video, but there's about four or five colors that I'll typically rotate if, depending on the conditions in the day. All right, moving on to number three, which is shaky head. I have a uh, fish taco baits. I think this is the, oh, I forget what this is called, the cyber match stick or something. It's their, it, it's not their Senko, it's the like finesse worm. Um, and I'm, I'll link it down below. I'll link all of this stuff down in the description below, um, but certainly this worm because I, at the moment, can't think of the name of it. But it's their finesse worm. I, it's one of my favorites because as you can tell, it's very floppy. Um, but it's buoyant, so it stands up really well in the water, and any little, you know, any little thing will give it, you know, this little dancing motion that you're seeing right here on the screen in front of my face. <laughs> um, I love a shaky head. It's my favorite finesse technique. I know people will say, oh, you need to throw the Ned Rig more, and I probably do, uh, but I prefer the shaky head. Now, I had a, an interesting discussion with a coworker of mine the other day. The shaky head even with a Ned Rig worm or style bait on it, we believe it's still a shaky head. So that's why I prefer the shaky head. I like the, the hook with the screw lock and the way it stands up. Uh, I, I like the, the hook style of the shaky head better than a Ned Rig, even the EWG Ned Rig um, style, because I think that this stands up better and I, I just like the hook better with the screw lock. Um, so I'll even throw like Ned Rig, Ned, Ned Rig plastics on uh, on a shaky head. So it's technically a shaky head if you if you want my opinion. Um, but I a lot of times just do it just like this with a worm on it, some kind of finesse worm. Uh, Zoom trick worm is also a good one. Um, drag and drop Guggen Squad. Um, oh, I forget their their other one, the Slim Shake. Their other one, but really any finesse worm. Uh, I'm down to try it, right? So this just happens to be a fish taco baits, um, which I really like their soft plastics. Their craws are really great too. Um, but the shaky head, this, the shaky head hook that I use is the spot remover. Um, one eighth ounce is typically what I'm using all the time. I just think it's a good all around weight uh, for the shaky head, but sometimes I'll go, um, whatever the weight is beneath that, that they carry at Walmart. I know, like in my Walmart, they only have two sizes. They have the one eighth and then there's one below that, but I can't remember at the moment. Uh, but I typically go with the one eighth, even in shallower water rivers or whatever, uh, I think it's still a good weight because with that and the weight of the plastic, it gets down to the bottom quick, stands up really, really well. I love the flat side of the head there. So it stands up really well, gives, like I said again, gives that worm really really good dancing action any little twitch of the rod or slap of the uh, the butt of the rod will give it good action now i don't know if you can see it very well in the ring light there um, i don't expose the hook typically in my shaky heads i leave it buried but kind of poking out you can see just a little bit of pressure and boom you get the hook point there um, I like to leave it buried, but almost exposed because then it just doesn't get hung up as much. It's much, much more weedless than even like exposing it or, you know, whatever. Um, plus with the shape of this actual hook, it's easier to leave it like that. The fish is still going to get it in their mouth and you're still going to be able to set the hook. No problem. So shaky head. You should throw it more. It's a very, very good lure. All right, moving on. Number two. My second favorite lure of all time is shallow diving crankbait. Now, I'm going to just say square bill crankbait. However, that uh, I think is too specific and narrows down too much what I actually mean by this. Now, what I mean is that I, I love throwing shallow diving crankbaits. As you can see, this is a Rapala um, OG series, so Odds Garage. Um, it's their like take on a balsa bait, and it's flat-sided. 
it's silent so no no rattle in it silent flat-sided great for crystal clear pressured water like I fish a lot of the times <clears throat> most times when people are throwing crankbaits it's just a normal square bill crankbait with rattles or knockers and the fish are seeing that all the time they see one of these little dudes swimming by skinny little guy with no sound <clears throat> they that might perk up their ears just a little bit right this is something different so clear water pressured water I like to go to specifically this one um, I forget the the actual uh, this is the tiny 04 of the odds garage I forget the color of this one it might be like mad shad or something like that it's a shad bait um, but I like that it's silent but it also has a rounded bill right instead of a square bill so it's still going to deflect off of cover it's still going to have the same wobble motion it's gonna be tighter because it's flat sided um, but it's still gonna have that same action and bounce off the cover and things like that. Um, the reason I say shallow diving and not square bills is because I still love throwing square bills <clears throat> year round. Anytime that I think the fish might be up in shallow water or along riprap or you know a rocky shoreline or whatever, I'll still throw a square bill crankbait a lot of times. Um, but sometimes I'll, I'll grab something like this and I'm quickly falling in love with this line of baits. I've got a couple of the larger ones as well um, and in a couple of different colors. Their craw pattern is sick looking. You got to check it out. <clears throat> but a shallow diving crankbait I think is just so versatile. I mean, yeah, you just throw it out and you crank it back in and there's not a whole lot of technique or finesse to it. Um, there can be, but there really isn't just in general. So. But I, I just love a shallow diving crankbait. I fish a lot of shallow, like I said, rivers and streams and things. Um, and a shallow diving crankbait just always gets the job done. Another one that I was going to show you, um, it's probably going to go into my honorable mentions, is the Rebel Wee Craw. I just love that crawdad crankbait. That is about one to two feet deep and shallow water with a little bit of rock on the bottom. It's... I've caught hundreds of fish on that little rebel uh, wheat craw, <clears throat> but a shallow diving crankbait is lure number two. <clears throat> and my number one favorite lure of all time to throw year round, of course, is a football jig. Now, the football jig, um, really excels in rocky like on a rocky bottom now if you've got sand or silt or you know grassy bottoms or things like that uh, you're going to want to go with a different different application probably right you're probably not going to go with a football jig but for me like i said where i fish and the techniques of fishing that i like to use the most uh, i am definitely going with the football jig above pretty much any other lure um, it's just it's just caught me the most fish I've ever caught uh, you can work it a bunch of different ways hop it drag it pop it you can swim this it's not ideal <laughs> it's not probably the best way to catch fish uh, but you can uh, you can bounce it off of things you know you can just vertical this it's a very very versatile throw a, a crawdad or a creature bait on the back of it and uh, there's just not many lures throughout history that are better than a jig and mine in particular I like the football jig because like I said I'm, I'm throwing around a lot of rocks uh, a lot of uh, like wood and timber so I the football jig is very versatile rolls out of those rocks really well nice big weed guard on it I do trim that down usually a little bit um, but this is a newer one that I haven't used yet so I haven't trimmed that or the skirt yet um, a couple of ways that I like to rig this of course Trim the skirt down about even with the bottom of the hook. Trim the weed guard down to, I don't know, about level with the barb on the hook is usually what I do. May not be the, the best. I don't know. The, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm just trying. I'm just a guy that's trying, right? Um, but usually about to the where the barb is is where I'll trim the, the weed guard down and throw a crawdad on the back. Pinch off the top section of a crawdad, throw it on the back, boom, throw it out, let it sink to the bottom fish they just have trouble resisting it um, colors I like to use with this of course natural 
in clear water i'm throwing a lot of natural colors crawdads bluegill colors uh, and then black and blue tried and true black and blue um, you can really throw it in any conditions clear dirty stained it doesn't really matter you can throw <clears throat> a black and blue jig pretty much anytime anywhere any place um, i just happened to grab that that uh, green pumpkin and purple one there um, it's like a kind of a hybrid bluegill type of pattern. I forget the exact color, but there you have it. My top five lures to throw year round. Um, I'll throw any of these at any time of the year, really no matter the conditions. Um, I'll just vary the type of presentation or maybe the color or size or um, a the application a little bit, depending on the context or situation that day but pretty much those five lures are ones that I'll throw anytime, anywhere. A um, couple of honorable mentions that I wanted to put in here, but I was like, I need to stick, stick with just five because then that'll be like an hour long video of just me talking about all of the lures I love. So a couple of honorable mentions, that Rebel Wee Craw, um, I'll go ahead and link these honorable mentions down in the description as well. Rebel Wee Craw, and then I love a, a popper. Um, I love the Guggen Blooper. Uh, I just, I like the size of it. I think it makes a good blooping sound. Uh, but then the Rebel Pop R is also a very, very good one, classic one. There's some others um, that I like throwing, but those two are the ones that I typically have in my box with me. Um, and then I think the last one would probably be the Ned Rig. Um, I've really grown to love the like traditional Ned Rig, exposed hook, mushroom head, uh, mushroom jig head, and small plastic. Um, just like I said, because I fish a lot of smaller water, Ned Rig just works really great. And I just love it, but not enough to put it in my top five. So it gets an honorable mention, but not into the top five. Give it a couple years, maybe a few dozen more fish, maybe a big one on it, uh, and it might crack the top five. But for now, it's just an honorable mention. So that is my top five lures. Guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. Um, hello to all the new subscribers and welcome to the Freedom Fish Freedom Fishing Community. Can you tell I just got back from drill? I can barely talk. <laughs> uh, but welcome to all the new subscribers. Hopefully this is just the beginning. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot of cool stuff this coming year. Some more lure based stuff, some stuff here in my I'll call it my studio. It's really just the loft bedroom uh, in the second floor of my house that I threw my desk in. Um, we'll call it the studio. More in the garage with some gear stuff, my kayak setup, all of that kind of stuff. And then of course, tons more content out on the water this year, some tournament videos. I'm hoping to do at least two tournaments this year. Uh, so big stuff coming, so stay tuned for that. Make sure and like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you found your way here and are not subscribed yet. Um, share this with someone who you think might uh, benefit from it. I, my hope is just that I can take the little bit of knowledge I have, which is not a ton, but a little bit, and share it with you guys to hopefully make you guys better anglers. And um, maybe just talking through this stuff will make me think through things and make me a better angler as well. That's part of why I'm doing this. Verbal processing. Uh, the more I talk about things, hopefully the more that I learn myself. So we'll all learn together. We'll all get better together uh, and hopefully catch more fish. So like I said, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like this video. Fly Guy Crew Wear. I will get with you to get you this nice box of soft plastics. And we will see you on the next video. Peace.